Byline Times continues extraordinary work year for us for out there in the British public. And this story is no different. A GB News top boss faces sexual harassment allegations, guys. Let's read more into it. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with another exclusive from Byline Times. They just keep dropping amazing stuff, guys. As I have put in the links in the descriptions before, and I will do again, if you guys can financially support Byline Times, please do so, guys, because they do wonderful work. The headline they have here is GB News top boss faces sexual harassment allegations as the channel is paid to shut down institutional racism claims. As the hedge fund backed news channel continues to platform star presenter Dan Wooten, Byline Times reveals the racism, sexism and misogyny risking the future of the broadcaster. Is it really surprising that it's spreading not just from Dan Wooten but to others as well? Um, this is pretty big. Um, if this is, is turns out to be true, it's a pretty disgusting and toxic environment as it is GB News and um, this from Byline Times is pretty damning. But let's read into it, guys. <clears throat> so, GB News settled an employment claim for a five-figure sum in which sexual harassment was alleged against its chief executive, Angelos Frangiopoulos, uh, apologies for mispronouncing the name, and shut down serious racism and bullying allegations raised by two other journalists with further payouts and gagging agreements Byline Times can reveal. And in her two separate workplace incidents involving other GB News executives, a woman went on sick leave after alleging she had been told she was so ugly she should put a bag on her head and that she should open her legs to win a promotion. Rather than taking legal action, she is said to have quietly left her job in disgust. Is this an appropriate workplace, GB News? If these allegations are true? Do you think it's okay for someone like Dan Wooten, considering the substantial amount of evidence on him, to be still working there? I think GB News needs to go quite quickly. GB News's position is that it doesn't have a toxic workplace culture and that the company enjoys a good relationship with current and former employees. The claim naming Mr. Fango Poulos is, is a married father of five made, made allegations that he put proportionated and declared feelings for a female member of staff in a late late night phone call after work drinks in 2021. Having been rebuffed, Mr. Frang Mr. Frango then allegedly undermined and marginalised the woman in her role before she left and got employed lawyers to negotiate a settlement with the channel. A source with knowledge of the case said she felt obtrusked, bullied and became psychologically distressed, essentially for turning down someone's advances. Byline Times understands that GB News had never received a formal internal complaint against Mr. Frangos, Frangopoulos. However, GB News did defend the employment tribunal claim. After a preliminary hearing, it was withdrawn and a financial settlement reached. As with two other settled cases, Byline Times have reported on today the ninth part of our special investigation into malpractice of the bro in broadcasting the news. GB News requires the, com the complainant to sign a non-disclosure ab agreement. The channel's position is that they are, for many reasons, for the use of NDAs and they do not constitute an admission of underlying allegations. The second payout in 2022 centres on alleged of racial discrimination and breaches of the Equality Act, according to insiders with knowledge on the case. The journalists who complained had been exposed to several thousand racist emails from some of the right-wing viewership, including around 800 featured shocking racial content from a single individual against whom GB News took no action. The woman involved got next to no support from the company, one insider told Byline Times. The content of some of these emails was really, really shocking. One referred to George Floyd as just another dead. I don't need to tell you that word, guys. But this is some um, pretty deep stuff. Another one said, why can't we laugh when we see notices on the windows of B&Bs saying no dogs, no blacks, no Irish. There was much worse things, unprintable things, and instead of telling the target of the emails to preserve them and hand it to the police, they were told to delete them and ignore them. 
there was supposed to be a human resources review internally to ensure complaints with the Equalities Act, which seeks to protect them against this source of harassment, but nothing really changed. The auto reply to viewers' emails even thanked the sender for contributing, but it was never updated also to tell them that racist or prejudged materials would be toler would not be tolerated and would be reported to the police. <clears throat> Again, to avoid all this avoid all this coming out to the formal courtroom process, the boss has made a high five figure offer to make it go away. But only with a non disclosure agreement clause, they fear that the label of institutional racism. So they're making everyone sign NDAs whenever things like this turn up and rather than actually dealing with the problems and dealing with their environment, they simply just pay it out, shove it under the carpet, and they think this kind of environment is acceptable. I have to say allegations because it is allegations, but it's pretty, pretty disgusting. It does make me want to swear, but um, I'll save that until after I turn off the red button. As part of its due diligence and alongside interviews with more than 10 GB News whistleblowers, Byline Times has checked the news channel's contributor auto reply, reply as part of its investigation and confirmed as of today, August the 10th, 2023, and concludes no caution against races, sexes, or misogynistic content. GB News' position is that it is not liable for third-party harassment and that it investigates the emails incidences properly. As a result, it says it's implemented enhanced spam filters to protect employees and make complaints to police when appropriate. The channel views itself as, a, as an equal opportunities employer with workplace rules and codes and has a grievance procedure in which claims of wrongdoing are investigated and acted upon. It says it addresses and investigates formal complaints professionally, even when they are against senior producers and presenters, it takes appropriate steps. Strong sense of weak management. A third payout was made to a journalist of colour who complained of racial discrimination from a GB News executive. A source with knowledge of the case described how the reporter was accused of overreacting to what they felt a prejudgmental treatment during a meeting in which they were singled out for criticising while white colleagues were not. The source referred to a period in 2022 also paid a picture of a racially divided newsroom in which staff of colour were tended to work separately from white colleagues. You, you need to tell me that that is not institutionally racist when you're separating black and white people. The journalist was eventually sacked following an anonymous complaint from a viewer which had in fact wrongly identified him and was actually related to a completely different GB News staffer in which highly racist phrases were used. Among the language in the description of the journalist was an undercover street, you know the word. However, GB News bosses used the complaint as the basis to terminate the journalist's contract, accusing him of gross misconduct for breaching protocols by using LinkedIn to find guests for GB News, which boss allegedly accept the standard practice among the male man's colleagues. He was made a scapegoat for the person who was really responsible. <clears throat> Without GB News backing, the journalist involved police after racial attacks and wrote to a number of senior MPs as well as representatives from the National Union of Journalists. His NHU representative Martin Shipton told Byline Times it is absolutely disgraceful case. I've never seen or heard anything like it. Any self-respected newsroom would have dismissed such an email out of hand and instead it was used to get rid of an employee, which is absolutely shocking. In two other instances of alleged sexual, alleged sexual harassment of GB News, which did not lead to threats of legal action, this newspaper has learned that a female journalist was told by two senior male colleagues to put a bag on their head as she was too ugly while another encouraged her to open her legs in order to advance her career. A source speaking on the condition of autonomy told the newspaper, if you want to look at it through the prism of sexism, then you ask yourself why are there only very few solo female presenters on GB News? They're all there to prop up men, basically. It's a very hostile environment where if you're going to get on as a female presenter, you have to put up with being a sidekick with just a very few exceptions. The new allegations about the culture of GB News follows a series of articles by this newspaper de detailing the privacy and professional conduct of Channel's star presenter Dan Wooten, who continues to enjoy a platform on his 9pm weekly nightly show. 
Woodson's regular column for the Mail Online has been suspended pending the outcome of the investigation, while his former employee, The Sun, has also launched an internal inquiry into his behaviour between 2013 and 2021, and has been asked to share his findings with Parliament. Dan Woodson denies all allegations of criminality. Insiders at GB News speak of a channel that began in June 2021 with aspirations to professionalism and remit a full populist gap in the broadcast news market which has now lost its way. There is a strong sense of weak management of, at GB News, one source says. When serious workplace issues are raised time and time and again, they are not being dealt with robustly. Experienced journalists are leaving en masse. The channel is having to rely on more and more of inexperienced editorial staff who don't have a compass to be directing a national broadcaster. When GB News launched, there was great hope it would become a disruptor to the broadcasting status quo, a real free speech channel, but it's losing its way. GB News has declined to comment on the record. Guys, this is um, pretty abhorrent, to say the least. Um, I just don't get it, guys. Um, it's so frustrating. These stories are... As, as important as they are to cover and they are so disheartening and it's it it's really just it makes me angry it makes me sad it makes me feel very negative thoughts guys because these are people who are being mistreated within the in there with the intention of doing good people there are pe there are people who work for GB news with the intention of doing good and they're being mistreated or by just because of the fact that they are of different gender or the fact they are of different skin colour and they're being treated indifferently. And there's a perception that I'm that's being painted by this story is that, that the only reason that women are there, the only reason that uh, uh, black people are there is simply to show people that GB News is a range of diversity when it, in fact, according to Byline Times, it is not and it's simply they are just there to prop up. And that seems to be the picture that is being painted here by Byline Times. And it does raise even more questions. You know, I just think that GB News needs to um, seriously look at itself in the mirror. Um, because if this carries on, Ofcom cannot continue to ignore this kind of stuff. Um, Parliament... Um, the police, if these continue to pile up, if Byline Times continues to unravel these things, the police cannot ignore this stuff. They cannot, and it will get to a point where GB News will have to get shut down. It'll have to, because you can't have this kind of environment, especially for a public news broadcaster. And they are a news broadcaster, um, regardless of what p people claim that they are. Again, I have to stress, these are allegations but it is still very serious ones to say the least and that they are hiding behind NDAs as well potentially as well to keep people quiet it's a very dangerous situation and it undermines the integrity um, of, of journalism out there but what do you guys think of the story are you surprised by this let me know down in the comments below do you actually watch GB News do you feel that sense if you ever watch it um, let me know in the comments down below guys like share and subscribe as always thank you very much for watching and i hope to catch you all very very soon